Hey there guys, welcome back to another video here at Top Tier Garage. If you watched my last video, you know that I put together a DIY e-bike for around $200. And today I'm gonna to be showing you, if you have some spare power tool batteries laying around, I'm gonna show you how to turn M18s into an e-bike battery. Stay tuned. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna need is at least two M18 batteries because we will be making a 36 volt battery for our e-bike. And when you wire these two in series, 18 plus 18 is 36. And I would suggest using the same types of battery. This, these are both five amp hours. But so in order to do that, you are gonna need to buy the M18 power wheels adapters. I just got these off Amazon. They were, I believe like 10, 15 bucks. And in order to wire them in series, you hook together the black and red, and then the other two go into a connector. And then I have a little adapter here. So what you can do is just clip this guy in. And bam, you got yourself an e-bike battery. Now this will plug directly into the e-bike, but obviously you're gonna need somewhere to mount these guys. So I figured, I'm like, you know what? What's everyone got laying around? A chunk of two by four. So we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna slap these two out, and we are gonna use some wood screws and secure them down and then zip tie them to the bike. So for this, we're just gonna go quick and easy. Just gonna take these little wood screws and just pound them right in. I mean, this thing isn't gonna be winning any beauty pageants. Easy access so you can get to the tabs, mount them off the front, and bam, got yourself a kit. So now what the plan is, I will actually be drilling two holes, uh, maybe one on each edge, in order to, so I can feed zip ties through them. All right, so in this, we're gonna drill through right here and right here. These will be the zip ties that I'm using. I don't really have crazy heavy duty ones, but it's just to hold two batteries on, and there'll be two points of contact for it. So now we're just gonna drill these through and it should miss the screws that hold down these. And that's gotta finish off the other side a little bit. Now we're ready for mounting. So we are gonna be attaching this mount the same exact way that this e-bike battery is held on. I've driven this thing about 50 miles and it has not moved one single bit. So I have all the faith in the world in these zip ties and plus this is only a temporary battery. So the estimated range on these five amp hours is actually gonna be pretty decent. So this 460 watt hour battery got me 26 miles and that was on like an absolute windy day. That was, if you look back in my previous videos, I will be doing a video about the the range of this e-bike battery. So that's 460 watt hours. I don't know if you could, each of these Milwaukee batteries is 90 watt hours. So that puts these two five amp hours at 180 watt hours. So that means it's about 20 watt hours per mile. So in, in theory, I should be able to get nine miles of range out of these two e-bike batteries or what's gonna be one e-bike battery, which is absolutely insane considering it's powering a 250 watt Bafang motor. But like I said, you can go back to my previous video and check out how I wired everything all together. This was just gonna be like a backup battery in case this one died. Like I was taking this big battery out for a max speed or a max range test and then it died when I was like six miles away from home and let me tell you, when you have all this extra weight and the wind's pushing against your chest, it is, biking sucks. <laughs> when you go from an e-bike back to just regular pedal biking, it is night and day difference. So now we are gonna be attaching this guy. And also this is just a soldered connection. This is, I believe, an XT60HM and for the parallel, I will be just using a Wago clip. So these Wago clips 
are actually rated for 32 amps, which is mind blowing considering I'll never be able to pull that much amperage with only a 250 watt draw. So now we'll be attaching this guy and snapping some batteries in and we'll be taking it for a test drive. Remember, be a civilized person and flush cut your zip ties. We're gonna add another one around the exact center in order to stabilize it hopefully a little bit. All right, so that's better. So now we're gonna snap these bad boys in. There you go, you got yourself a 36 volt e-bike battery. That should take you about nine miles, but we are gonna test it out right now and take it for a little spin. All right, so time to take this thing for a quick spin. I'll be rocking my Fitbit to show you guys I'm not working super hard in order to pedal this bike. I am curious because it is in the mid 40s right now, so I'm curious if that's gonna affect the length that these batteries will go, but. Turn it back on. All right. So now I got this guy. All right. So we got Stravada up to keep track of all of the speed. Well, obviously we're not we're not going 12 miles an hour. Look at that. You can like stand it still. But I will be going on assist power five the entire ride and also it'll be full throttle the entire ride also so let's get to it hey, look at that no pedaling All right, so now that we are about a little over three miles in, like nothing dipped off the battery. We are still sitting at 38.2 volts. And these things are ice cold yet. Absolutely, absolutely no heat draw on them at all. But like I said, it is mid forties out here. So it actually might extend the, the length of the batteries. But overall, we might we might be getting over nine miles on these two batteries. From a, from a dead stop, it takes a little while to get going, especially when we're going uphill. For my predictions, we should be about halfway done right now. If you're a normal biker, this kind of hill gives you guys just complete anxiety and just dread, but watch how easy it is with the e-bike. There's no standing up, there's no nothing. You just kind of just start pedaling. And you just glide up the hill at 16 miles an hour. So now we're pulling max wattage right now. I'm curious what that elevation gain was that. I 
But as you can see, we're, we're rocking full power out of that battery and only two bars left. So now I'm not gonna pedal this entire way. I'm just gonna coast all the way down till I see that telephone pole down there. I'm just gonna coast. 7.7 7 and a half quarter miles. All right, so we're one half hour in. We're sitting at about almost eight, eight miles. We have 35.1 volts left. Still ice cold to the touch. Oh, we got one bar left on her. So I wonder what everyone thinks when they're going back and they see M18 strapped to the back of this bike. <laughs> but we're just gonna keep going. But we pretty much just coasted for that last half mile back up the road here. And we're still at 55 battery, so we should be able to knock out the rest of this ride. I think we're actually gonna overshoot the, the nine miles, maybe. So this battery controller does have an under voltage shut off so the batteries will not damage themselves from over discharging. Don't wanna ruin those expensive Milwaukee batteries. All right, so we are now officially past my expectation of these batteries and we're getting, I believe the cutoff is 31 and a half volts and we're at 33.7. So we'll see, I think we're getting to the end here. We might be able to scoot 10. So we're finally starting. I'm, I'm curious, I think it's gonna kick out pretty quick here, but we're down to 29.4 volts. And my phone's dying too. So we got, we got every battery device here dying. GoPro is probably on its way out too. So now we're just gonna keep pedaling, or not pedaling, until the display shuts off and it'll be lights out for, I think it'll be pretty quick here, but it exceeded my expectations by about a mile and a half. It's really struggling here to get up this hill. As you can see, the miles, miles per hour dip in and the power assist. So now this is actually not the correct miles per hour, obviously. As you can see, I'm not going 20 miles an hour, even though GoPro footage seems kind of deceiving, but still going 25.4. I bet if I let off the throttle, she's gonna, and try to give back on it again, she's gonna kick out on me. I don't think she's making it up this hill. Oh my Lord. <laughs> oh, she's still going. Yeah, she's, she's down for the count. We don't want to drain the batteries too low. So we're at 27 and a half right now. Batteries are pretty much gone. 10 and a half miles at an average of 15. It was pretty much 16 the entire time. So overall, we'll see. Let's see what these guys look like. And they're flashing. So that's all she wrote on them. They're still, still cold to the touch and all that good stuff. So when I get back to the house, I'm gonna run some numbers and do some different scenarios. If you'd slap like two M12s on here, how far you'd go and all that good stuff. So see you then. All right, so we're finally back after the bike ride. Now we're finally gonna start crunching those numbers down and seeing what you could do with different size batteries and all that good stuff and how much it would even cost. So first off, we ended up going 10.66 miles, which is absolutely crazy with an elevation gain of 462 minutes. Those two batteries powered that e-bike for 41 minutes, almost 42 at an average speed of 15 miles an hour. It's crazy what two drill batteries can do. We also had a max speed of 22 miles an hour, which 
is crazy on a DIY e-bike. So now I'm going to pull up the elevation. This is all tracked through the GPS on the phone. I, it was literally uphill the entire way. As you can see from this, at around mile two, it's basically just straight up. So we had a crazy elevation gain, mostly hills, almost all the way up. So that was pretty good. So now I'm going to pull up my Fitbit data to show you that I really wasn't working that hard. So we double click on that. Average speed of 117 beats per minute, which is crazy. So now this is not only the M18. You can see exactly where I I stopped pedaling and then it was just a continuous downhill. So I'll put a mark there right now, as if you couldn't already tell, but I had a, average, or a max of 150 beats per minute. For most people, 150 beats per minute is like start just starting to get into their cardio. So this was just a leisurely bike ride, nothing too major. But so now what you guys are really interested in, so I crunched some numbers, and so the two 5 amp hour batteries end up going 10.66 miles, which is 180 watt hours. So the average is 16.88 watt hours per mile, which is actually very low. Uh, the last video that it did, it was around 20 watt hours per mile. So now I looked at Home Depot's website and looked at the most common M18 sold, and the co most common is the 2 amp hour which is if you stack two of those, it's 72 watt hours, and that'll be able to get you about 4.27 miles. So if you don't have a very long commute or anything like that, I mean, just two 2 amp hours would be perfectly fine. And then next up is the 6 amp hour. So both those combined are 216 watt hours, which will give you 12.8 miles, which is very long. And then we got the big boys. We got the two, two 12 amp hours, which is 432 watt hours, which will give you 25.6 miles. So now if you can just sit down on a bike for 26 and a half miles and your ass isn't going to get sore, I mean, kudos to you. I don't know what kind of cruiser bike you got, but it's a nice one. So then that's absolutely insane. So now in order to charge these, you basically just put how many watt hours. We're just going to do like a perfect transition of power because usually the chargers have like a percentage loss and everything. We're just going to make it easy. It's going to be pretty close. But you basically take how many watt hours your batteries are. So like the 5 amp hours were 180 watt hours. You basically add a 0.18 and then you times it by whatever your kill, how much you get charged per kilowatt hour. So we get 10 cents a kilowatt hour here. So you just add, you just times 0.18 and then you times it by 0.1, which is... 1.8 cents in order to charge up those two five amp hour batteries two pennies gets you a long ways too so now if you do that same exact math for the 12 amp hours the biggest ones you could probably fit on the bike so if that's uh, 0.432 times that by 0.1 in order to charge those two 12 amp hour batteries it will cost you 4.3 cents not bad and that'll get you almost 26 miles in the same exact conditions that i were granted the wind was like non-existent when i had my bike going so overall i mean this is a super cheap and easy way to get around i mean all the links will be down in the description below if you guys are looking to put together your own work bike or anything like that i mean back and forth to work I mean, as long as it's not pouring out, this is basically free transportation. You don't have any license, no insurance, no nothing. Or even if you lost your license, this is still a pretty quick way to get around instead of pedaling. So if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.